This talk comes very good. You guys put a really amazing program because uh, this is basically after all these presentations from the companies. And as you can see, pretty much every company is coming with uh, some kind of augmented reality. So this probably my job in here is going to be a little bit of um, put together a uh, neutral zone uh, more unbiased than anything um, idea of what's happened with augmented reality on the spine today. Okay, so as you saw in the presentations, um, this is my conflict, as you saw in the presentations, uh, there is a um, multiple uh, options of um, augmented reality. However, it, it's interesting because the first thing that we have to do is try to understand what is the difference as one of the uh, industry sponsors uh, defined very clear between augmented reality, virtual reality, mixed reality, and enhanced reality? I mean, there is a million of these terms. So I uh, just want to make it simple. Um, basically, what we do almost every day in most of the places in America is navigating a screws is basically reality, okay? And uh, you just pay your screws, you use, if you're using fluoroscopy, you're using real-time information. If you're using navigation, you're using information from a previous loaded CT most of the time. Some of them are based on, uh, obviously, X-ray as well. Augmented reality is basically exactly doing your cases with navigation or fluoroscopy, but you are pretty much enhancing what you see with a computer information. And then you generate that perceptual information and you can make it as complicated as, as you want, including haptics and feelings and uh, different gestures. Uh, which is interesting is that um, to put it together is augmented reality, basically you put digital elements on a live view. That's the most simple step. And I will say the natural path what we do in most of the times right now. So that's why every company that you saw today, the next step is actually augmented reality. They're not talking about they having anything on mixed reality. There is nothing also on uh, virtual reality, what can be used right now with our patients. And then obviously the maximum expression will be the virtual reality where um, it will be somehow mixed with the augmented reality. And uh, one of the good examples is, for example, the flight simulator. Flight simulators, if you go, for example, to the headquarters or uh, if you go experience in Miami, for example, you go to all the, where the flight simulators are for real, uh, we're talking about $12 million uh, uh, flight simulators when uh, you have the maximum expression of augmented reality, virtual reality, and all the haptics. So I would say our goal in the spine is somehow someday having exactly the same functionality that the flight simulator, they have the pilots running uh, for, you know, preparing to be a uh, professional pilots. And this is, this is what I come when the educational power of this technology is going to be amazing. So it's going to be not anymore the time that our residents and we learn just by doing cases as we go. We're going to have these modules, these uh, spine simulators where we can put this many hours and then uh, we end up actually uh, getting into the real cases with a really good experience. So um, this is what we have right now. Right now what we have is you have a CT that is they come in multiple colors and flavors as you saw in the previous exposures, each one with good advantages or not. Or if you even more sophisticated, you can use your preoperative CT, feed it into the computer, open all the DICOMs. You know, for, for uh, I know that we have a really good international um, audience for international audience that don't have too much access to navigations and these technologies. Basically, as, as one of our industry experts um, mentioned, the cities that we have intraoperative basically is a big collection of x-rays 
that they come together in one single package and you can open them and you, they say you can escalatonize the, the, the data that you have going backwards and then actually you can find a single slide x-ray and you can match it with a good computer. So that's the technology that works, for example, that you don't need to take an intraoperative CT to do that. Obviously it's advantages or disadvantages, but what we have right now is this. So as we know, there is probably, I, based on my knowledge, I can be wrong. There is only one FDA approved system that can use augmented reality in the market right now, which we saw it on the uh, um, exposures. And I think um, uh, Dr. Lynch will going to show probably a case or something specifically with this. So basically is, um, and it's very interesting because you're gonna see, it's gonna be a floating on the market of headset and augmented reality systems. Why? Because if you have a navigation system, you have to add the next step that is just to put the augmented reality part on your you do. So um, this system, the one that is available, as you know, um, because this, I mean, the, on the CME part, I, I think it's fair not to mention the trademark, um, but it's a really good system where basically is a basic uh, headset that uh, is able to interact with your preoperative and intraoperative images and then give the factor of the augmented reality. These are some of the, the pictures from the system as you see here. It has some really good advantage, which is having the, a three-dimensional view of the spine. And it's very good because when you're using the classic navigation system, you only have the axial view and the sagittal view. But if you add the three-dimensional view, you have this one that is very important. Actually, for example, if we look in here, I can see the interface between the transverse process and the facet and put my screwdriver or my screw exactly at the entry point. So this is, for example, some new feature that we don't have on the, re on the, on the normal navigation system that we use. So you see, for example, this augmented reality system, more than anything, is showing us a very nice new way to find the entry point that actually give us a better three-dimensional view. And this is just going to become a better. This is, for example, I believe this is uh, one of the Philips or the um, uh, 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 brain uh, lab uh, images where you know you also can interact on tumoral lesions. And as you see here, they're just coming and coming. And, and the, the, what is interesting is the, the future of this, the potential is almost unlimited, you know? So you can have in your head up display as much as feedback from, you can have, for example, your monitoring uh, screen, you can have patients data, you can pull out preoperative images as you go, you can show up measurements, it's, it's, it's unlimited. And this is just coming because what is very good is that the headset actually is not as expensive as you think. What is more expensive is actually the platform, what you do, the navigation and that. This is another system, for example, as you see here, uh, it's pretty much the same idea. We like this fact when you have the three-dimensional view of the, the, of the spine that you can actually identify where is exactly your entry points are in, in order to uh, match the trajectories on the axial and, and sagittal. So um, there is, uh, as, as I mentioned before, this is coming. Um, uh, there is a multiple options. There is also enhanced uh, reality options where, where you not only uh, I'm, I'm adding different uh, images overlay on the anatomy, but also actually the images that you get, you can actually improve them. Just imagine that in your head, you have like a super power, a Photoshop uh, system that every time you shoot an x-ray actually enhances that much that looks like a, almost like a real uh, bone and real anatomy. And this is coming and then you can start adding structures. For example, you can start adding, let's say on lateral, the lumbar plexus. And if you have a really good source MRIs, you fuse them and you can start looking now where are the nerve structure, vascular structure. This is amazing what is coming. Obviously you have to understand that right now, probably the biggest utility of the augmented reality is basically what you see here, which to me is huge because improve the flow of the surgery and then improving the flow of the surgery and making more time. So you see here, when you have a headset, 
you don't need to take your head out to look for monitors and trying to chase screens all over the room, yeah? And this is huge because you flow. As you go, you flow, and then the cases get, get going. But uh, I want to make sure that uh, all the audience understand that all these technologies has a, a still one big problem. And you have to understand, this is I will call the cancer of the, uh, of the, end, the, the terminal disease that we have been able to control of all the navigation and all the uh, uh, any of the enhancing technologies, which is the lack of real time information. So don't forget, every time you're navigating, it doesn't matter what brand, what you are, you're relying on image that is not a real time image. So the future, and I hope that these companies and all the technologies, they focus on how can give us real time information as we go. You know, because sometimes it's scary when you put a high speed drill through a cannula working, you know, five, six inches deep and you're drilling something that what you think is a pedicle or a facet, but that image was taken 15 minutes ago. And if the patient has a little bit of shift of movement, you can imagine the complication. So uh, in, in summary, augmented reality is here, as you see, there is already one FDA approved uh, system. I can bet with you next year when we do the course again, it's going to be three or four. And we're going to see something about mixed reality. And in two or five years, everybody will have augmented reality. So uh, thanks very much. And I just like a little bit of eye openings, what we have and how exciting is our technology. Thank you, guys.